welcome to the second video of the project to set the um, local QNH and I named the, pro <laughs> the project an option like FSX um, because in fact um, the principle is nearly identical to how it is in the FSX or prepared where you got a p button that you can press and uh, it would set the um, the Q and H. Um, there was a transition that would make the same button able to switch uh, to either um, the standard uh, pressure when you are above the transition. Uh, however, that's very limited, as that is an American uh, transition, as far as I remembered. Um, and um, then the local below, uh, you could assign a button to to adjust them separately as well. But now in this project, you got uh, to assign two buttons um, instead. Um, and in principle, it does nearly the same as in FSX, it just takes the QNH as it is at the moment. I'm not gonna compare as I don't know 100% how it works in FSX. What um, uh, What's based on that as I haven't analyzed all those data. Uh, but in here, uh, what my project is doing is it is um, having a button that sets it for the standard uh, 2992 uh, that's the standard pressure and that's the standard key that you can assign then you got the uh, local QH uh, uh, button and what I mean by the local QH is actually it's not going to read what the uh, destination airport is um, is telling you because it can't read a flight plan if it isn't there and such and I'm not sure that I could pro or I probably could program it but it but I guess it would be quite a long programming to get it right um, so it is just as it was in FSX you press the button and it just takes what does the simulator read right now so as you can see, the current uh, pressure at sea level is 2989, according to explain. However, this is the QNH that is used in explain at the moment at the airport, as that is actually what the airport is reporting at the moment for the QNH. Um, as I w guess the user that contacted me was a bit uh, confused by the, the data and I understand that because in fact explain here actually the SLPRS should actually if I uh, understood it correctly from the data ref it should actually be the, um, the uh, standard pressure at sea level it should be the pressure at the sea level. However, if you go into the um, um, well uh, provider at the moment, you would see it got the altimeter for Seattle as it is right now, and it is two nine decimal eight nine. However, you would see a little uh, notification below where it actually says a new value in millibars only for the sea level and that's not the same so in fact you can say that is actually uh, telling us that uh, the sea level pressure that x is reading is not actually what is in real world the sea level pressure so I hope that would explain it that side of the story because um, as it is right now when you press that button it just going to read the value here 
whenever it is correct or not. It is correct according to the meta for the airport. Seattle Tacoma INT. That is correctly. Romeo. So nineteen hundred So the 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 data that you get for the Q and H should actually reflect what the airport is uh, reporting at that given moment. So what it means is that if I was flying towards Seattle and I'm flying in between two airports, it's just going to take that uh, sea level pressure, whenever it is correctly or not, from the uh, weather report, it would take that q and H that is given for the given airport that you would actually get as a pilot. So, you actually have the most accurate um, q and H for your given position, as this is actually what the simulator is reading, and there is nothing more uh, right than what the simulator is reading. Um, as you can say, that's one of the main issues when you are flying online, and why if you start using other weather engines and do not select the option to use VATSIM weather or something, the controller might suddenly start asking you, well, have you set the Q&H to the given value? And you might wonder why do, do, does he ask for that? And it is probably because your data is not matching his data, so you are not at the altitude that he is reading. I have actually tried it a few times where he actually reported me being a few uh, feet above or below what he actually uh, was uh, getting as a, a readout on his display. So you can say there is no real right or wrong here. Um, so this is a compromise. It reads the data just like FSX did, or prepared. It reads the data that the simulator got at this given mo moment that you press that button. Because the value that I uh, have visually here is the value that data ref is actually what uh, what my script is reading at the moment as you push that button. So that's basically how it is. So whenever you are using default weather, if you are using an external weather add-on as I am doing right now, you can see the weather report. The pressure is what is set to the sea level pressure, even though you would know in in the real world that um, the sea level pressure and, and those things are, are used for given uh, calculations and such. So um, you can say we got some mismatches here and you can say the more people are going to look into given areas, the more you would find the simulator might not replicate how it is in the real world even though we have a lot of things that comes close to it and I would say that because I actually in fact uh, has been a tester and the more I am testing the more things you actually might find might not be there uh, in the simulator but knows it is in the real world so um, you can say the more knowledge you get about it the more annoyed you sometimes get because you actually find that you have just been flying on an illusion that isn't entirely correct. So um, that's uh, why it sometimes can be a bit of a challenge and why you can say it gets a bit mixed if you start by flying by one simulator and jump to another one and to another one and another one and then if you learn something from one simulator and you jump to the next you sometimes find well is it me that is doing something something wrong or 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 isn't this the same and um, sometimes you're right some things could be better in one simulator than another one 
and, and that's basically how it is and that's why I just say by this that this is a compromise and it is for those that just want an option that you uh, basically are known uh, that is known to the users of FSX where you just have to push a button and then it would set the QNH nothing fancy in there so um, so it might not uh, give you 100% the right values for your destination but you could update it along as you're flying um, even uh, I also mean there's some reference points in the in your checklist to to check the um, the altimeter and such to uh, correct it to the given values and such um, so um, so that is how it is but uh, this feature might be most useful for those that is not flying online you can say you can use it online if there is no air traffic controller to tell you the QNH and you are a bit lazy and don't want to uh, fiddle with the ATS frequencies and all that stuff because we are different and we they are different purposes of using the simulator so this is just a simplification that instead of tuning in a frequency to get the latest data or I or such you can just press a button and then it would set the the QNH for the uh, altimeter so you got the altimeter set uh, for your uh, aircraft at the given time so that's basically what this project is all about so now I really hope I have explained it that yes you can use it by external weather programs and such it doesn't matter because what my little script here does is that it's just reading what the simulator is reading it's not going into your uh, uh, weather reports or anything uh, and read the data it reads it directly from the simulator uh, where you can say now I'm at this spot boom what do you read and it reads the value as shown there that's what it would set it to so I hope that was more informative else I'm sorry um, and we would have to chat a bit more about it so um, thank you for watching and bye bye